All right. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Miss Priscilla, and I'm the Year 4 lead, and welcome to the Year 4 meeting. So we're so happy to have you all back. We're so happy to have all our newcomers, and we welcome you all. So I'm going to get right into the slides, and we can wait for questions at the very end. All right. Okay. Here we go. All right, like I said, I'm Miss Priscilla, and I'm the year four lead teacher and also the 4A homeroom teacher or home tutor. And across the year group, all home tutors teach English, math, science, humanities, and for the time being, art and ICT. Um, one second, just admitting more people. All right. Sorry about that, just more people coming in. Okay. All right. So as I said, I'm Miss Priscilla, for those of you who've just joined us, and I'm the year four lead teacher. Hi. And I'm also the 4A home tutor. Uh, Miss Pam, I'm going to stop share really quick so Miss Pam can just give us a wave and a quick introduction. Miss Pam, are you here? Hello. This is Miss Pam. Miss Pam is the 4A home tutor and she teaches the same things. Um, English, Math, Science, Humanities, which includes um, Geography and History. And for the time being, Art and IC. Miss Yvonne, Miss Yvonne Bolton. Miss Yvonne, are you here with us? Could you give us Yes, a I am. Here I am. Hi, Miss Yvonne. This is Miss Hello. Yvonne, the first e home tutor. And she also teaches math, science, English, humanities, art, and ICT. All right, let me share screen again. All right, the reason I said that uh, we are teaching art and ICT for the time being is that uh, we are kind of understaffed. So we are working on getting a qualified art and ICT teacher as soon as possible, hopefully uh, in, the next, uh, in the next half term. So we're looking at getting an art teacher. So um, for the time being, art is with us in class and we are teaching it based on, we're trying to do a cross-curriculum um, curri cross curriculum idea where we link up with, um, So I for A today, I had class with 4A and they would have done um, an art project related to ancient Egypt, our first unit in humanities. Hold on, I just let more people in. All right. Um, and then we have our wonderful teaching assistants. This is Miss Praveen and Miss Rachel. And they are, a sh are sharing TAs between the three classes. So they come in and support every time uh, they can, just with ELL learners, with um, learners who need a little bit more attention and things like that. So they come in and they support each one of us, Miss Pam, myself, and Miss Yvonne. Next. Sorry, just any more people in? All right. Now moving on to our subject teachers, we have um so with the whole subject specialists with year four onward to year six i'll explain a little bit more about the how to choose subjects and what subjects i can alter in a bit for now um, our bahasa teachers are first point of contact with your child's class teacher and so um, any worries or uh, one second. All right. Okay, uh, we have Miss Azira, Miss Renu, and Miss Honey. And our Bahasa is Bahasa, and actually Bahasa and Mandarin are divided into bands of beginner, in, intermediate, and advanced. So Miss Azira is teaching the beginner class, Miss Renu, the intermediate, and Miss Honey, the advanced 
group. Um, how it works is that they sit for an entrance, not an entrance exam, I would say, kind of like a pre-test that they go through in the first week and they would have done this last week and then they are streamlined according to their ability that way. All right, moving on. We have Mandarin. Again, we have three bands for Mandarin, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. For our beginners, we have Miss T. For our intermediate, we have Miss Hong, and for our advanced, we have Miss Tan. And also, I've attached their uh, emails just in case you need to get into contact with them at any point. Next, we move on to French music and drama. French is part of the languages. However, it is not streamlined. Um, Miss Jenny teaches French, and that is her email address in case you need it. Um, Miss Anne Peter is our music teacher, and Miss Claire Johnson is teaching drama. Drama is a new addition to the timetable, and the kids absolutely, absolutely love it. They've had one lesson, and it just proves to be quite popular already. Next. We have our PE team, Miss Claire and Miss Nadia are our PE team. And we started PE this week with strict SOPs and everything in line. Um, we used to have PE spread um, across the year group at the same time where all three classes would have it at the same time. But because of SOPs, we've, re we've reduced that to one class at a time. So we can just, we've just got more space, we've got, um, more attention on each kid and just, you know, a lot more room for them to move around. All right. So the language options in terms of picking and what is compulsory. So for year four to six, they have the option of three languages only if they're not Malaysian. If they do not hold a Malaysian passport, they could pick between Malay, Mandarin and French. So out of these three languages, they pick two. For if you are a Malaysian child, or if, you, if your child is Malaysian, if they hold a Malaysian passport, they have to take Malay. That is a compulsory subject. So that takes up one of the two subjects they, 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 that they can choose from. And they can either choose from Mandarin or French for their second language. So again, Malaysian students have to pick Malay. And then they've got the choice of Mandarin or French for their second language. However, if they're non-Malaysians, they can pick two subjects out of Malay, Mandarin, and French. All right. It is slightly different for the year ones to year three, where um, the Malaysians have to do Malay and Mandarin, and the non-Malaysians have to uh, do Malay, Mandarin, or French. All right. So moving on to our school day. So this, these are the... So, oh, you, Priscilla. Yes. Uh, does anyone have a question? No, okay, I'm gonna move on. All right, Oops, sorry. So these are our new schooling hours. They were tweaked slightly from last year. So if you're a returning parent, you might notice there's a change in our Friday timetable. So arrival is at 7.45. As usual, the children come up to class and everything, and our first lesson begins at 8 a.m. Followed by break at 9 o'clock for 20 minutes. Um, at the moment, they are having break in class. The food gets brought to them, and they eat in class. Of course, teachers are strict with sanitizing and washing hands before and after break. Um, follow, after break, we have lesson two at 9.20. Um, that will end at 10.20, followed by lesson three. At 11.20 is the start of lunch. And because um, we used to stagger lunch in the previous years, they do have a quick 20 minute break before they actually start eating. That's when we pick up our food and we sanitize our hands and things. And then they start eating at 11.40 till 12.20. Um, at 12.20, we start our fourth lesson of the day from Monday to Thursday. And then at 1.20, we start our fifth lesson of the day. After our fifth lesson at 2.20, we have reading time or circle time. This is usually um, on their iPads. We have read, uh, reading apps that they can go on. Or it could be mental mats 
that they do in class. Um, or they have circle time kind of winding up, packing up and heading out to dismissal. So at 2.50, they're downstairs at the dismissal area. Right now it's the car park, um, the shaded area for pickup. And once CCA starts, this is still in the works. It's not permitted yet, but when it does start, it will start at 3 to 3.45 and then pick up at 3.50. All right, on a Friday, it's slightly different, all up to uh, after lunch. So at 12.20, we have reading time on Friday as usual and circle time, followed by the end of the day at one o'clock. However, as soon as CCA starts, we will run CCA for a two hour slot on a Friday from one o'clock to three o'clock. Um, that is for students who would like to stay back. Maybe you might have parents who can't pick up too early in the day and things like that. All right, moving on. So this is our school, our class timetable. This is the 4A timetable and across the year group, it does differ. I believe um, our year teachers have already sent these out um, because they were updated just on Monday. So these are our timetables for B and for C. All right, moving on. So now just an overview of what exactly we are doing in each subject and how it is divided according to each term. So we have three terms in a year and each term is divided into three segments for English subject, which means we cover three overall units per term. Um, that is one of fiction, one of nonfiction and one of poetry and play scripts. Um, the first unit in term one, which we are focusing on right now, is historical fiction. Everything historical fiction, reading and analyzing historical fiction, and planning and writing a story in the historical fiction setting. Um, we will usually, at the end of the unit, we usually write a big write that is um, based on the theme. In this case, it will be historical fiction. And a big write is kind of an essay that we kind of plan towards. All right. And next. We have, sorry, give me one second. We have the nonfiction unit in term one, which is non-chronological reports. So teaching the children um, how to order a report, with how non-chronological work, reports work and focusing on um, factual writing and how it differs from fic um, fictional writing, of course. And then again, working towards a big write at the, at the very end. And then we have poetry and play scripts at the very end. Play scripts would be our unit this term. And this is working on dialogue and performing and projection, speech projection and things like that. In term two, our fiction unit is fantasy stories. So looking at fantasy stories, looking at elements of fantasy, how it differs from factual writing and factual stories and things like that. And at the end, doing a big write on fantasy stories. In term 2B, that is the, uh, the second quarter of term two, we are moving on to news reports and children analyze news reports and newspapers, write their own news reports at the very end. And the last quarter of term two is focusing on poems of, from different times and cultures. And just looking at different cultures different poems from cultures like haikus and riddles, rhymes and things like that, everything poem related. And in the final term, we have the first quarter, which is stories about issues and dilemmas. So this is looking at stories um, which are kind of current. So looking at stories about bullying, stories about friendship, stories, um, you know, anything that covers friendship issues, relationship issues, and things like that and all coming together and creating a story at the very end. And then explanations and explanation and persuasive text. So persuasive texts like advertisements and how they are persuasive in a way that gets the attention of a reader and creating our own advert at the very end. And finally, we have poems in a variety of forms. This is where we are writing poems and planning our own 
and they read all sorts of poems from shape poems to um, nursery rhymes and things like that. All right, that was for English. For math, in its same across the year, uh, across the year group whereby it's split into three units per term, where the first one is number and problem solving. So things like um, number line and things. I'm gonna let Miss Pam take over. Miss Pam, could you help me with this one, please? Okay, so for the first term, number and problem solving, it's mainly on how to read and write numbers up to 10,000 and to round numbers. And for the uh, 1B, after we have done with the number and problem solving, uh, so we have also problem solving. So it will be a simpler one compared to term two and term three. And then when it comes to 1B measure and problem solving, they will need to learn about units of measurement, uh, weight, length, and capacity. And then there will be a problem solving at the end, how to uh, solve problems involving um, measurements um, or weight. One C at the end of term one, we will be doing handling data where they will be learning of how to collect data and then presenting it in a bar graph or a pictograph. So they will be learning about different uh, data handling and also to interpret those data. So they will need to learn how to explain uh, and interpret uh, the, the data that they have collected and they are presenting. Uh, and at the end, there will be a problem solving. In term two, number and problem solving, then uh, we will be having fractions, decimals, and, uh, and then at the end, a problem solving on it. So there will be money problems where they have to learn about decimals and then money word problem. Uh, term two, 2B, two geometry and problem solving. This is where shapes comes in, 3D shapes and 2D shapes. So they will need to learn about all the different types of shapes, different types of triangles, and there will be a problem solving at the end of uh, the unit of 2B. At the end of term two, again, measurement and problem solving. If you notice, there are three uh, measurement and problem solving each term, there will be one measurement. So for example, term one, if it's on length, term two, it will be on weight. So uh, kilogram and gram. Um, and then, so if it's kilogram and gram, problem solving will be involving the uh, weight. So measurement for weight. Term three, number and problem solving again. So that will be a little bit on a higher level where they need to learn about uh, problems, solving problems uh, on decimal numbers or fractions. And then comes measurement and problem solving. This measurement will be on capacity. So which is liters and milliliters. And then they will be learning how to solve problems involving uh, liters and milliliters. So they need to know how to convert those units also. And then in uh, 3C, at the end of term three, that will be handling data and problem solving a little bit more advanced than the one that they have learned in term one. So term one handling data, one C, uh, where 1C, at the end of term one handling data will be a simpler version. And then at the end of term three, it will be a little bit more complex where we are trying to start them to get ready for year five's uh, maths. So that's where handling data and problem solving comes. So a little bit more advanced. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Pam. So um, it's really just a progression and growth throughout the three terms. And problem solving involves a lot of um, critical thinking and word problems. We realize that word problems can be a little bit hard to decipher when it comes to math because um, a lot of children don't understand what the question really wants them to do. So that's also incorporated in problem solving. All right, moving on to science and humanities. For science, we start off the term one with our unit 4.1 on skeletons and muscles. And they learn all about the human skeleton and vertebrates and invertebrates. This unit also includes medicine, so learning about the different types of medicine, but um, that is a very brief part of the unit. Um, in 4.2, they learn about the different states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases, and how they exist, what they look like in atom form, and things like that. In term two, they learn about magnets, magnetism, and materials, so different things that are attracted by, by, material, uh, by magnets and 
the uh, the makeup of every different type of material, things like plastic, iron, metal, and so on. Um, in 4.4, we're looking at habitats, so animal habitats and how they're conducive for the animal and how they live in that habitat. Moving on to term three, in four point, unit 4.5, we have circuits and electricity, so everything to do with electricity. And um, we did not get to do this last year, but I believe they will get to make their own circuits and things like that. Um, we're quite hands-on material in this unit. So in the final unit, we have sound. So looking at pitch, looking at volume, and how sound travels and yeah. In humanities, we also have history and geography. So how this works is one half of the term is spent on history and the next half on geography. We start off the term with history because it is the bulk of the humanities subject. It is quite comprehensive. There is a lot to take in. So this, uh, this time of year, we start with ancient Egypt in term one. And we cover everything from the River Nile to the pyramids and Egyptian gods and goddesses. In unit two, we have improving the environment. So looking at recycling, looking at pollution, looking at reuse and reducing waste. We're looking at what causes pollution and the different types of pollution, how we can eradicate this. In term two, we have, um, we start off history with ancient Rome and then move on to the next half of the term with food around the world. So exploring the different types of food and how it's made and from uh, what culture it's from and things like that. Of course, at this point of the year, we're hoping that there are new SOPs and it's a little bit more lenient and the children can kind of taste the different types of food from around the world. This unit also incorporates um, traditional costumes from around the world and culture and traditional wear. In term three, we have unit 4.5, which is ancient Greece, and looking at things like the Olympics and how the Olympics came about and how it's influenced the Olympics today. And in the second part of the second half of the term, we have unit 4.6, which is space exploration, looking at planets and the properties of each planet. Um, also, we're looking at what's in the news, and this unit covers volcanoes and earthquakes and how volcanoes occur, how earthquakes occur, and how it falls in line with, falls in line with the position of the earth and the earth's plates and things like that. This is also quite a hands-on chapter as they actually end up making their own volcanoes and things like that. And one, again, one of their favorites, just from experience. All right, moving on. So assessments, this is a popular one with parents. Um, so in primary school, we do focus more on teacher assessments as opposed to exams, as we do believe they're quite young and it still takes a lot for them to kind of get in, get in that exam mindset. So they do have tests. They're known as GL tests in term one and term, term three. So it's kind of a pre whereby a pre-test and post-test whereby they sit for um, four different tests at the very start of term one. We're hoping to do this either next week or the week before, uh, sorry, the week after. Um, they sit for four tests. The PTE test is an English test. PTM is maths, PTS, science, and NGRT is our reading test. So this incorporates comprehension and uh, critical thinking based on a big text. Um, there are big writes at the end of each unit. For example, our historical fiction unit at the end where they write a historical story is counted as an assessment. And they also have spelling assessments at the end of every uh, quarter term, sorry, half term. So there's one, we do have spelling every Friday, but there will be one spelling assessment at the end of every half term. Um, we also have an initial and EOU assessment that is still in the works and you will get more information about that when it's kind of finalized. Um, moving on for term 1.2, this is the um, half term after our half term break. 
we have Renaissance Accelerated Reader. This is part of our timetable. It's at the very end of the timetable that lasts 20 minutes of the day. Um, I can show you a little video on that later. Um, that is our reading program, so, um, more inclined to guided reading. Um, followed by our assessment uh, and our big write. So these assessments are the assessments at the end of every unit. So at the end of every unit, the teacher does a teacher assessment. This could be in the form of a, this could be in the form of a discussion. It could be in the form of an observation. It could be in the form of a presentation. So that's how it's done. Um, in term two, we have reading band update. This is related very much to the Renaissance reading accelerated reader. And we have a big write and the initial uh, e EOU assessment. In term two, again, we have uh, accelerated, read, uh, accelerated, re accelerated reader, teacher assessments, and the big write. And again, in term 3.1, the same, followed by 3.2, where we have the post-test that's different from the, from the rest. Um, it is a PTE, PTM, PTS, and NGRT as a post-test just to see their progress throughout the year. And you, we will get reports on this, so insist on them during a P PTM meetings with your teacher. All right. Um, home learning. So um, homework is sent out on rotation every Friday. It can be in the form of reading, practice, extended projects, my maths or IT based. So reading could be read theory. Uh, practice is uh, spellings, which is sent home every Friday. Phonics, mental maths, known facts. Extended projects might be humanities. So working on a research or just kind of working on a project that they might take home on a Friday. Um, our accelerated reader, this is also um, part of our reading program. Right now, I know uh, the year fours are doing read theory, but this is also going to be in play once we get our logins and things like that going. And next, we have MyMats. MyMats is also a very differentiated and it's very comprehensive maths program that we're going to get the kids on with their own logins. And they are sorted into bands the minute they do a pretest upon loading the app. All right. So these are the re recommended um, learning extension minutes for each year group. For three and four, where we fall, it's about 30 minutes, which is the amount of time they would take to do the homework that we assign. Uh, one more thing missing from here that's also under practice is Education City. Education City is an interactive application whereby the children can watch videos and follow, uh, answer questions following these videos on different subjects, whether it's humanities, science, English, or math. It's a very, um, children love it. They love getting on this app and um, it, it's really helpful, especially because it's super visual. All right. <clears throat> Um, next, we have our school uniform and PE kit. This is our school uniform. So this is the complete school uniform with the mask, the black shoes. Um, we do allow for slight white design on it and slight whatever design on it, but it should be predominantly black. Um, the PE kit is the black shorts and their GEMS PE shirt with trainers. Um, they can wear their trainers, but they um, only on their PE days. Um, some things to remember to pack for the children when they are coming to school are just um, resources to take to school, books, handouts, things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Water bottles, COVID equipment like sanitizer and just extra masks. Some of them are not very um, durable. They might tear throughout the day. So some of them are scrambling for some extra masks. Sorry, give me one minute. All right. Um, importance of labeling items. So uh, we did send out a circular saying for children to bring their own stationery. Some children still are borrowing and we're trying to discourage that. Um, so it's like color pencils and a complete pencil case with glue and scissors. 
in the works. Um, adequate sleep, uh, because they're not getting much movement at the moment, they can get a bit restless and or the complete opposite, tired in class after a long day of just being confined. So adequate sleep is absolutely important. Um, a healthy snack and lunches. Um, I, some of you may be taking school lunches. They might be assigned to school lunches and school break, which is fine. But for those who aren't, a healthy snack and lunches would help because um, they get kind of tired throughout the day. And a lot of children come to school telling us that they've already eaten way, way early in the morning and refuse to eat at nine o'clock. And that can be kind of, um, they can get kind of hungry by that time, if you ask me. Um, and make sure they do eat breakfast and drop off and collect on time. This is important because they, we don't want to leave them unattended and it's important you arrive on time. About drop off, um, they need to be dropped off by 7.45 because that's what time registration begins and they have till 8 o'clock to get to class. And um, pick up time is at 2.50 from Mondays to Thursdays and 12.50 from on Fridays. Um, and how the new dismissal program works is that you need to park your vehicle, get out and pick them up because we won't send them uh, just to your car and you have to come and get them yourselves. All right, um, about cardigans, uh, only school cardigans allowed or since the uh, uniform shop is out of stock at the moment and we're waiting for the shipping, um, any black or navy blue uh, cardigan is advisable. We are not encouraging um, any pink or any casual type cardigans just for safeguarding issues. All right. Um, next, for communications with your teachers, um, we always prefer a face-to-face -face meeting instead of an email. Just easier to come. Uh, it's just easier to get the message across and just discuss what we need to. Uh, emails will be answered as soon as possible. However, we do not check emails while we are teaching. Uh, we we do try and get in between lessons when we have the time, but it may not be as prompt as it needs to be. Um, if you do wish to leave a message with the school receptionist, she's Miss Kavita, you can do so and she will arrange for us to call you back at a particular time, a convenient time for you. Um, weekly updates. Um, these weekly updates are sent home every Friday with the learning intentions for the coming week and other important announcements, um, reminders that the children might need to bring to school, and things like that, learning intentions for the following week. Um, lastly, we'll be calling you periodically this year between parent meetings to ensure you're up to date and you will be emailed in, in, advance, in advance in case we're having a Zoom meeting or a phone call at any point. Um, uh, next. Oh, that's it. All right. Um, we do have some time for question and answer. Is it possible for you guys to type it in the chat and we can answer them as we go along? Yeah, I'm gonna stop share. And you can type it in the chat and I'll answer as many as I possibly can. All right. Okay, if you're not able to chat, please feel free to unmute yourself and just shoot with your questions. There's a question here on the chat box. Yeah. Uh, will the flight deck be circulated to us after this session? I think the Zoom is already been recorded. Yeah. So I think a parent is asking for a circulated slide. So I think they'll be able to see it through the uh, yeah, recording. I will ask Mr. Tate um, if we are allowed to circulate the slides just because um, we've used some of the children's pictures. There is a safeguarding and a privacy issue. So we will have to double check on that. Um, I've got a question. Sorry, one second. Our cardigan is out of stock. Yes, so the, uh, when the, now that the cardigans are out of stock, you can use a black or a navy blue cardigan in the meantime. Um, and it's when, when it is restocked, you will hopefully get an email from the uniform shop. Um, next we have, how do I know, uh, how do we know our child's language level, beginner, intermediate, or advanced? So this is where 
um, the teachers do a pre-test where they streamline based on that test. And then throughout the year, they will be moved up to either advanced in, in, or intermediate based on their progress throughout the year. All right. Um, next, do we have to send art supplies in for art class? Not at the moment. Um, if ever there is a need for art supplies, we will, um, we will ask for them the day before. Or if it's a big, if it's a big task, like um, if you don't have paintbrushes and we need paintbrushes, we will tell you the week before. So don't worry about that. Uh, sorry. For the most part, we have um, paint and art block and things like that. So don't worry about that for now. Um, yes. Yeah, I will count. Are we still using Class Dojo for year four? For now, we are using uh, Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah, we, we scrapped Class Dojo at the moment, although it, I was in favor of Class Dojo, but we have transitioned to Phoenix for now. And while we're still kind of um, transitioning and rolling over into that, there are a few teething problems, but um, for the most part, we communicate via Phoenix or email. Uh, can you tell us about mental mats versus mats? All right, mental mats. Um, Miss Pam, would you like to step in here? Yeah, mental maths is, uh, we will be doing that at the end of the lesson, just like accelerated reader. It takes about 20 minutes. It's like a quick fire question. And we could also give them like about 10 questions for them to answer them quickly. So it can be done like a quick fire question or on a template. So for example, I repeat a question um, twice, so three times six, and then they have to quickly write it down. And then I'll repeat it again. Okay, uh, I mean, I'll repeat it three times six, and then they will kind of, uh, in, in a given time frame, they have to answer the questions like quite quickly. Maths, so it's here versus maths. Maths is in the curriculum where we will be teaching it for a one hour lesson. So that's like the proper curriculum um, a programmed lesson. So that's the difference. Yeah. So in, uh, basically in maths, we teach technique and we teach the different ways of solving problems that they sort of apply in mental maths. Mental maths requires less working out and more um, mental calculation. Yeah. Um, with regards to language, how do we change the language chosen? Um, for right now, Malaysians, like I said, have to pick Malay and they do have a choice between Mandarin or French. If you do wish to change it, you can email our head of languages. Um, Miss Soraya, I will get back to you with his email after this, after this meeting. All right, um, next we have, since due to cover back, uh, uh, all books stay at school, will the digital copy be able to be? Uh, no, not at the moment. We don't have plans to send home any digital copies. Um, but, in, but we, upon request, we are happy to send pictures of children's work um, that they can take on their iPads. If you'd like them to take pictures on their iPads, please feel free to let us know and we'll remind them to do that. Um, it's still quite early on in the year, so we've not got much going on in there, but we do have stuff going on in there, um, just not much at the moment. And we're trying to steer clear of like worksheets, stuff that's a bit more physical and go online a little bit more. Um, next, how do we register for Mandarin versus French? Um, is this uh, Miss Kellen? Is that right? Yeah. Um, ah, yes. How do we register for Mandarin? Okay, um, right now, uh, may I know your, your child's name? Zachary for A. Okay, hi. Um, so right now, Zachary takes Malay and, um, and French. Is that right? Uh, no, I would like to register Mandarin for Zachary. Okay, so How you, do we do that? How do we go about it? I to speak to the head of languages. Again, I can send you his email right after this. Um, and you just have to register through him. I'll get you. Hey, thank you. No problem. I'll get you in touch with Mr. Do uh, Mr. Dawson, I believe. Yeah. Um, All right. Thanks. No problem. Um, next, Jeremy from Fossey. When will we know what level they are in and when they should buy the book? I believe right now they are out of stock, but because it's only the second week back, I think teachers are still kind of streamlining them into their language bands. So as soon as they are confirmed in a band, you should get um, the book list from the teacher itself. They, they, the teachers will get in touch with you or I will from um, a message with the teacher. Uh, from, from the teacher, yeah. 
Um, can you share the links of my mats and the other one which you shared? Yes, I will share that with you. Um, right now, we're still working on distributing logins. And as soon as they're confirmed, I will share the username and the password for each children with you. All right. Uh, is there a platform where parents and teachers can communicate class dojo? Um, at the moment, we can communicate through Phoenix, but there's still some tweaks that need to be done. Otherwise, um, you can communicate with us through email and we will get back to you within the same day, just not immediately. Yeah. Is Metholia Home Learning still in use? Um, we, we haven't used it this year and we don't plan to because we're moving to my mats. Um, but Metholia is really up to the class teacher. Right now, uh, with Metholia, we need to renew our license and buy more slots for children. So I don't think we've done that at the moment and we need to renew that. So I will have to double check. Yeah. Um, what is the Accelerated Reader? The Accelerated Reader program is kind of like a guided, reader, guided reading program. Um, I'll show you the, the video in a bit and I can share the link with you in the chat box in just a minute. Uh, one second, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'll just play it. Okay, I just need to. All right, I'm just going to share screen again. Success in reading is the best predictor of achievement in school and in life. And the quantity and quality of reading practice is the best predictor of success in reading. Studies show that the top 10% of students read more than 40 minutes per day, while their peers in the bottom 10% read less than two minutes per day. Research also indicates that students who read appropriately complex text 25 minutes or more a day will grow at twice the rate of those reading less than five minutes daily. So the mission is clear, but turning a reluctant reader into an avid one takes more than commitment. It's the right classroom tools and the right teacher insight. Renaissance Learning leverages billions of reading data points to develop programs that help teachers connect their students with the right content at the right time in the right way. Our independent reading solution enables teachers to guide students to the books that fit their interest, maturity and reading levels. Students expand their knowledge and vocabulary as they're motivated to read more frequently and they work with their teachers to set and achieve personalized reading targets. Accelerated Reader from Renaissance Learning is currently providing a reading platform for schools all over the world. The benefits of reading at the correct challenging level are experienced by hundreds of thousands of students and their teachers every day. The new curriculum emphasizes okay. the importance of providing close reading experiences and helping all students okay. to have a lifelong love of reading. Hello, Kroger, yeah. Scaffolding supports Hello, struggling, proficient, or advanced you as they encounter more complex text and develop critical thinking skills. Using our dashboard, teachers can of learning standards. Teachers can monitor both independent and instructional reading activities across content areas, and they can use assessment data and our research validated learning progressions to chart a path towards reading success for every student. Teachers of more than 10 million students across the globe rely on Renaissance learning to help them build a culture of reading in their schools and a gateway to lifelong learning. All right. So um, in other words, Renaissance Reading is, or Renaissance Accelerated Reader is um, 
a streamline. So putting it in bands as well and just children reading at their own level and progressing throughout the program. Yeah. Um, Um, I, we have the ICT curriculum for the year, meaning learning intentions goals. Uh, yes, we will be following um, a, a particular ICT curriculum. At the moment, we're going to be using our ICT slots for the children to do their PTM, PTE, PTS and NGRT tests. So once those are completed, then we're going to be starting our ICT program in full. And once we get that, we will definitely send them out to you. Yeah. Um, next. One minute. Um, lost. Um, initial and e EOU assessment is um, the initial, meaning the start of unit test, and the EOU is end of unit assessment. So these are made by the teacher. So they'll start with kind of a pretest, trying to figure out the prerequisites of the children and then end of unit test. So for example, if we've started with skeletons, at the very end of this unit, we'll have an assessment just to bridge that gap. Um, next we have, children have been allowed to play games in the class. What's the guideline on iPad? Um, so with the guidelines, it's only um, that, I believe we've we, uh, only allowed children to go on uh, educational games. <laughs> So um, uh, I, I'm not sure about playing games in class. I think that was allowed for the first week. I know they're definitely not allowed for the rest of the year. It was just um, a lunchtime, golden time reward for the first week. Um, as uh, to answer your question, iPad use in school, it's strictly for uh, class use and educational use only when the teacher allows or says, yeah. Uh, what if I do not have the Phoenix? Will I be given access later? I believe all the children were already given access um, and they will get the logins by the end of this week. Um, they've already been assigned uh, an email and a password, so they should get in no problem. I have to double check about the parents. I was under the impression it was already assigned because um, I've already have, I already have my 4A parents linked in, but I will double check with IT just to make sure. Um, thank you. Uh, do they have science experiments and humanities activities in class? Last year, they didn't have any. Um, yes, because science is a little bit more hands-on this time, for units like solid, liquid, and gas, they will get to have a little bit of fun with experiments, things like goop. We will be making goop. It's a, it's a material that's half solid and half liquid, and the children love it. So we will be doing quite a few experiments this year. And uh, however, we may not have it a bit, uh, have it as large scale as we did last year because of COVID and things like that. So, yeah. Um, will we run ELL program this year? Yes, if you do, uh, you will be contacted by an ELL teacher if need, if your child needs or uh, is recommended for an ELL program. Regarding home learning, will students be assigned daily 30 minute tasks and how will the children submit these? Um, this is usually for the homework activities. Um, it's sent out every Friday and this is either through like um, reading, practice, projects, research and things like that. Um, this is usually submitted the following Friday unless it's, of, unless it's spelling which is done on the Friday the following week um, or Said, what, said otherwise by the teacher, unless they want it on Monday or any time during the week. We will let you know in our weekly update or the, by the home tutor herself. Uh, will you share the list of apps? Yes, we will share the list of apps with you. Um, right now, we're still kind of finalizing them and it really is up to the form tutor what apps she would like to focus on for reading. I like to use Read Theory. Miss Pem and Miss Yvonne may have something different that they like to use. Um, although uh, parents can sign them, their children up if they're happy to do that on their own too. Um, any mobile app for Phoenix? I'm not too sure. I do have to double check. I access it through a browser on my computer, my school computer, and that works fine. 
Um, but I understand for like on the go communication. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to check App Store actually. Thank you. Um, I have a bad experience of iPad was lost during the class. How secure is this? Until now, Miss Emma didn't get back to me since my son injured. Okay. Um, about the iPads, they are in the tray while we're in class and they pack it up at the end of the day. But because we're in class throughout the day and I'm in class throughout the day, Miss Pam's there throughout the day and Miss Yvonne, we don't really leave for break and lunch. Um, it should be all right for now. Um, but now that you've brought it up, we can put in some safety measures to just keep their belongings safe. Um, next, could you please send the list of apps? Yes, I will send the apps and the login details. Um, and so will your form tutors. As soon as they're finalized, you will get a list out and your own um, codes to log in. If four people ask have Epic, will school sign up for that or do we have to do that? Um, the, the funny thing about Epic is that it's best accessed in school because the minute they take it home, because it's beyond schooling hours, the app becomes a payable app. So a pay for entry app. While they're in school, they can use it for um, in an educational establishment. It's funny. But so they're best using it in school. Um, if uh, uh, will school sign up for that? Um, you will have to do that. Um, but I wouldn't suggest paying for it because the kids can just use it in school and they can use stuff like read theory for after school because that's free and it's wonderful because it's comprehension and that's one of the key skills that we're trying to improve on in English. Yeah, can I request allow my kid to bring back some books for his weekly revision? Um, I'm not too sure. We're kind of discouraging this because of um, transmission and um, I can maybe get him to take pictures if it's absolutely necessary um, or um, I could assign homework in in that field in yeah in that subject uh, will each class get a teaching assistant um, yes at the moment we're a little understaffed and for that reason we have a shared uh, we have a pair of shared TAs across the year group. Do the kids need to bring their iPad every day or will the teachers advise them when it's needed? Um, it is recommended that they bring it every day because um, <clears throat> um, they may need to take pictures of things from the board and just faster instead of writing them down. They do take a little while to write stuff down. Um, it's just faster with an iPad. We, we use a lot of QR codes that lead them to different links. So it's better for them to have it every day. Um, what is the SOP for PE and sports? Um, it is per class. So a PE lesson is per class. They come in, they're sanitized, uh, their hands are sanitized immediately. They're spread out one meter apart and they use only the MPH. The MPH is, I believe, sanitized after each class. And the year fives and sixes are in a different location from the year threes and fours. Um, well, when will Perry class continue? Sorry, have I missed a question? Yeah, uh, Perry class will continue um, in week four, fingers crossed. We've just sent out registration forms this week. So we're hoping to get them back and get the ball rolling by, Nick, uh, by week four. We're currently in week two. Um, could you send ICT curriculum when you get it? Any idea when they could be getting new ICT teaching? Uh, no idea at the moment, but we will update you as soon as we do have an ICT teacher. Uh, and we, we can send you the ICT curriculum as soon as it's finalized. Yes, no problem. Please give some homework project or maths practice about each topic you cover. Help us know which, how much our kids understand. Yes, absolutely. Normally our homework is based on the units we're doing. We'll, we'll never stray away from what we're doing in class. We won't give them anything more, anything less. And definitely something they can manage on their own that their parents don't have to get too involved in. Um, just in case we have working parents and things like that. Yeah. All right, um, we've actually reached our six o'clock marker. We've got five more minutes. Um, I just wanna let you know, thank you so much. Uh, could you let us know what happens in the class? Um, sorry, Miss, Mrs. Karthik, could you let me know what you mean by this question? What happens in the class? Um. Actually, it so happens that the kids never tell us what they learn in the class or anything. Okay. It's hardly that they, you know, open up and say what, uh, yeah, yeah, what I they totally understand. And all that. Pick them up um, and 
so, so much. So we'll be in completely unknown state that uh, what kids actually, you know, doing in the class, how they are doing and all. Since uh, because we, now we can't come to and meet you and all. Right. Uh, if you would actually give out one or two details about how they are doing yeah, in no class. Problem. I think you might have missed it, but we actually shared with you um, our plan for the entire year so our our um scheme of work which means the topics we cover throughout the year mrs karthik i will send them to you no problem just an overview of what we do i think you might have missed it earlier on during the power yeah um yeah i had some connection problem. oh no problem and also, i also know how the kids would be doing also okay uh, we will get in touch with you occasionally just for an update about how you're yeah. definitely yes that would be great thank you no problem all right, I think Ms. Karthik, if students are not submitting homework or need to do revisions, will class teachers update individual parents weekly? Yes, definitely. Um, I think we have a reward system and we do have a consequence system at the same time. So uh, with 4A, I know we're doing a three-strike three, a three strike reward system or whatever you might call it, whereby the first one is a reminder without if you don't do homework. The second is a note home. And the third one is a call to parents. And I believe Miss Pam and Miss Vaughn might be doing this as well. Um, sorry to have to leave the conversation. Thank you very much, teachers. You're most welcome. Thank you for joining us. Are we going to use Class Dojo? No, we're not using Class Dojo anymore. We are going to be moving to Phoenix. Yeah. All right. Um, if you do have any more questions, please, please let us know. Email your form tutors and we're happy to help you with any questions you might have. If um, you'd like to get in touch with the language teachers, I'm going to send you their emails and your form teachers will send you their emails as well. Um, where can we access Password to Phoenix? Um, this will be sent out in school by the end of the week. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, parents, for joining us. And we hope to see you more often in school and hopefully less virtually. All right. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye, <laughs> Bye Genevieve. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And me. Well, it's one more person, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh i did too much talking no it was great wow, you did you very well yeah. too much i was just like I, was, I thought i was just saying some nonsense no, i'm really sorry i couldn't um, that's fine that's really, fine. i just wanted to cover you 